welcome to this week's episode of Stream Squad. In case you guys are tuning in for the first time, I'm Angela, and I'm joined today by Dan. Hello, everyone. He's uh, back in front of the camera Back this in front week. of the camera. It feels weird, you know, I was getting ready to go live for this, and I was like, where are my headphones? I don't have headphones on. This feels really weird, so... Surprises, um, surprises. Yeah, I know. And we've got a, a different setup again this week. So I feel yeah, like we've shown like a different set of the past few weeks. Yeah, this is a, I guess we can call this a way to get a couple people in using just one mic yeah. because, um, yeah, we're just plugged in through the, uh, through an iRig again and not going through the whole mixer and all that stuff. So yeah. Makes it a call lot. what you will, but makes yeah. it a little quicker to handle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little different. No biggies though. Um, but yeah, I think we have a pretty cool show today. A lot of good exciting stuff going on and i'm going to go ahead and switch cameras here to angela bring up this industry news and let her go yeah so we've got a couple of fun things to discuss with you guys today the uh, first big one is facebook has upgraded their stories yet again um now they have group settings for your stories for any kind of facebook group or facebook event now this is something i've noticed over the past 24 hours um, different events that I had marked myself as interested in or going to would appear in the stories bubble at the top of your phone on the app and there would be a little red icon and it was weird but I didn't really look into it and that is this new update so if you are a part of an event or a group when you do your Facebook story, you now have the option to send it to that group or event. So this is great for concerts or weddings, things where you're posting, you know, good content that you're seeing, but also other people attendants are posting good content and everyone kind of wants to soak in everything um, to make sure that there isn't just random things going in there. They do have settings for the admins. You can either have it where everyone's story is approved right away and you can delete them later if you want to, or you can make it approval first where the admins in charge have to take a look at what's happening and then set that approval. And if you've marked yourself as interested in going, again, that event is gonna pop up as a bubble you can tap on the bubble and it's gonna automatically give you the option to add a story or watch the stories already in. So, you know, Facebook has been trying to distinguish itself from Instagram and Snapchat with stories and this is definitely a good option, you know, that we haven't seen coming out from the other two yet. Yeah, um, I don't know, what are your thoughts on stories? I haven't really used them too much. I'll be honest, I haven't used it. I was big on Snapchat. That was my thing yeah. for a few years. Um, Instagram came out with their stories feature, and for a while I just never looked into it. Um, after a while, I started to kind of look at other people's, but I wouldn't make my own. But then I realized that I had a lot of followers on Instagram that I didn't have on Snapchat, so I kind of do a, a two for one, which I've seen a lot of people do. I take a picture or video on Snapchat first, and then I save that to my camera roll, and you can upload that into Instagram. So same thing, same caption hits both people. Right. Um, I haven't moved it over into Facebook, haven't really tried it, but you know, it's something like this. It could be really cool to start playing around with it for concerts or other events that are happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't I haven't done too much with either Facebook or the, the Instagram or Snapchat even. Yeah. I know I'm bad about that, but <laughs> um, I know Chase who did our he was um, hosting our show at VidCon this year. I was talking to him about this back then. I don't know how much has changed since then, but um, he said when Facebook first came out with their stories, he, he tried it out a little bit, but was getting no views and. He started using Instagram stuff and saw like triple or quadruple the amount of views. He's like, oh yeah, no more Facebook stories, um, just go on Instagram. So this could be something cool maybe, you know, to uh, yeah. switch it up and uh, make make Facebook stories better. So Yeah, I think um, one thing in knowing how Facebook is constantly making changes, it could come to play uh, sooner rather than later. You know, just like Chase, I've noticed my biggest following with any kind of story is on Instagram, but Instagram does allow you to tag other users and throw in hashtags. So it's that 
visibility, that searchability that makes it easier for people to find your stories. And that's something that Snapchat doesn't have. And right now, Facebook stories doesn't have, but definitely with as many updates as Facebook's coming out with, I wouldn't be surprised if that comes soon because that's a fairly new feature for Instagram as well. Right. So I, I feel like Facebook's going to make that push to the tagging system. Right. Yeah. Very good. Very good indeed. Um, so what else? I know there's a couple of things we wanted to hit on. Yeah. Next on the list is not quite as a feel-good story no, as Facebook stories. All. Um, for anyone out there who's a YouTuber, thinking about being a YouTuber, or just thinking about putting up a video for the iPhone 10, um, there's been a bug that's been reported the past few days. YouTube does know about it, but we wanted to bring it to you guys' attention. Um, of course, with YouTube, you can monetize videos. If there's more kind of adult content, vulgarity, anything like that, you'll get a restricted monetization, which basically means you don't really profit off that video. Um, the iPhone 10, of course, is written as iPhone X. And what this glitch is doing is it is flagging any video that has the title or description with iPhone X in it as being a restricted monetization. Some people are noticing it right off the bat. Some are checking hours later and it's happening. The problem is YouTube has to manually review any kind of appeal. And with the number coming in, people are racking up, you know, 200,000, 300,000 views before their video gets fixed and they've mm -hmm. lost all the profit from those views. Um, so our recommendation, if you are going to do any kind of unboxing or comparison video for the iPhone 10, write it out as, you know, the number form, right? One zero right. for now. When it's fixed, you can move it over to X. But with this being known, it is something YouTube's working on. Definitely, if you've got monetization open, just write as one zero, and you'll avoid the headache that yeah, a lot of people crazy. have been just, running into. I wouldn't have even think to look for something like that. Yeah. Just putting, you know, I I, I saw or... like some people mentioning, you know, monetization issues on YouTube, and just kind of glossing over it on Twitter. I just figured. You know, it's kind of what's come to play this year where a lot of unboxing videos in the past have been really high energy, but not always kid friendly. And those are some of the people that have been hit hardest by YouTube's new changes. So that's what I thought going into it. And now it turns out it's a bug affecting anyone. Mm -hmm. So definitely something we wanted to yeah, do for I think you guys. It, I think that whole system needs to have a pretty big overhaul on yeah. YouTube's side. I know I was talking with Ernesto, um, one of our engineers, about YouTube and all that stuff, and he was bringing up how um, um, how people who just put like controversy like as a, in their title or as in a tag, you know, like no swearing or anything, they're just like tagging that they're, they're talking about a controversial topic, or it could be the definition of controversial, and I yeah. guess that's getting that's getting flagged as well. So um, it'll be interesting to hear YouTube's response and see how they figure. I don't know. It might not be a bug. Yeah. Who knows? We'll, um, we'll see what they yeah. do with it. It might, it might be something where they're censoring out the, the, the X. X. Yeah. So, they, not, maybe not the iPhone X, but I, I don't know. It's Yeah, they haven't confirmed what it is, but pretty much anyone who's dealt with YouTube in the past is figuring it has to be the X. There's nothing else that's consistent in these videos other than the X. So again, one zero, it's going to save you a headache and your unboxings can still be monetized that right. way. One more, another kind of, I guess, more exciting yeah. piece, right? So uh, the new Apple Watch that came out, the Series 3 that was released in September, um, everyone kind of wondered how it would fare, especially with there being two versions, one with cellular data and one without. It turns out it's been a huge win. Uh, over the past couple of months for quarter three sales, Apple watches are now the dominant smartwatches of any. And uh, I've actually got a couple of stats that list what happened in quarter three. And keep in mind, Apple came through midway through this quarter. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens next. 23% um, of all smartwatches purchased were Apple watches, most of those were the Series 3. There were some Series 2, though, because of that price drop. Uh, next in line, 21% was the Xiaomi. Uh, after that, 20% got Fitbit. 
And then we have a very huge drop. 6% got Huawei watches, 5% got Samsung, and the remaining 20% of that pie is everything else just lumped into one. So Apple is definitely a force to be reckoned with with smartwatches. I know me personally, I had no interest in an Apple smartwatch until Series 3, and now it's been on my brain for a bit. I might mm -hmm. need one of these. Yeah, I know Whitney brought Whitney picked one up uh, a few weeks ago, and yeah. I think she's been enjoying it. Um, so I know I I I'm the same way as you. I was wasn't even considering the Apple Watch or anything um, until this new one. It seems yeah. like it's a pretty good pretty good model or good feature set. Yeah, I was big on the uh, the Pebble smartwatch. I've had those for years, and unfortunately, they went out of business about a year ago. So. I was already thinking I'm going to have to find some kind of new watch because without updates, it was getting very glitchy. Um, I started looking into Fitbit. It wasn't really what I was looking for, but I was tempted to get it. And now I'm planning on picking up an Apple uh -oh. Watch soon. So it, it was the answer to what I was looking for, especially with, you know, the heart rate tracking and everything mm -hmm. like that. But, uh... That's, that is great. I'm going to go ahead and read through a couple of these comments we're see, seeing sure. here. Seeing a lot of people giving us some shout outs. I see Dave's in here. Hey, Dave. My blog, Frank, uh, Jay, Christian, Ryan, Oliver, Stephen. Um, yeah, Stephen from the Clutch Radio Show. Nice. I've, I've, been, I've been enjoying that, watching that a couple <laughs> times. I think you posted some in our user group that we'll, I'm sure we'll get uh, talking about a little bit later. But hey. Yeah, it's a super, super good show you guys are doing there. Um, just to answer a couple questions here real quick. Um, can we use other cameras with this program? Just iOS devices for right now. Um, so iPhones, iPads, iPod touches. Um, you'll be amazed at what, and until you start try it, you, you don't know. You'll be amazed at how well those cameras can do. Um, and they're only getting better. Yeah, especially I always recommend when people ask, which cameras for best results. I always recommend 2016 on. That's when Apple started really pushing their camera quality, their video quality. So, you know, if you're going for the best, the newer iPhones, the 7 and above, the iPad Pros, you're going to have a great result, especially with our camera control settings. Mm -hmm. um, there was one more I'm trying to, to see. There was the other question here. Oh, any word on the iPad Pro and iOS 11.2? And I think that was the where there was a little UI glitch or whatever. Um, I haven't checked. In. I think we have a fix, um, but we're not going to be able to put it out. Or has the fix come out? Do you know? I know um, there was a fix released on Sunday. It's version 3.5.1. Um, as far mm -hmm. as I know, that has resolved all the issues coming in. I haven't seen any new ones. Um, if you guys still are having issues despite that fix, you know, it is something that was a known problem. But also, that uh, 11.2 was a beta build. If you're on a time crunch, you need it to work, I would highly recommend reverting back to 11.1. .1. That will also mm -hmm. resolve the issue. Yeah. Um, but again, check the App Store. Um, 3.5.1 for Switcher Studio came out over the weekend, and that should have resolved all the issues with the Pro. Yeah. Um, see Brendan here as well, and Sheba says, go Angie Chew. Oh, howdy. <laughs> um, so with that, I think, um, thank you, first of all, everyone for tuning in. Yeah. Um, you know, keep leaving comments, and we love, we love seeing where everybody's from, and all that good stuff. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and switch gears a little bit, and go into our strategy, that I think we've got some good stuff for you to sure. queue up for us. So one thing that's come up, you know, quite a bit is how to create graphics. We've got some graphics that were pre-made in the app on our show right now. You're seeing some of our animated lower thirds, but of course we've got, you know, our own logos and everything that are on there. And a lot of people, instead of using the dynamic text, are wanting to use their own created version of lower thirds and they realize not everyone has access to programs like Photoshop and other paid programs. So we actually have an article that went out on our blog today, switcherstudio.com slash blog. I think Dan's got I'm about to put that link right now, hopefully. Yep, there it is. Boom. Okay, 
So the link is in there, um, so you guys can check it out. It'll break down all the programs I'm about to discuss in further detail, but three programs that we highly recommend using to create lower thirds and other graphics are Canva, Over, and Pixlr. And we're just gonna give you a brief overview of each one. So Canva has a lot of pre-made customizations. When you log in, you can choose YouTube presentation or you know Twitter posts, things like that, so that's sized 100% correctly. They also have their own version of a resizer in there. So if you make this beautiful graphic, it's set for a Facebook banner size, it'll automatically convert it to a Twitter size for you. So you don't have to start from the beginning, it'll automatically do that conversion. Again, you can kind of just drag and drop tools as you need to create your own lower thirds. You can import images to help to create different graphics, and then you can export. Now, one thing to remember with all of these programs, and we'll get into a little bit later, Dan's gonna go over how to bring these into Switcher Studio, is it needs to be exported as a PNG file and with transparency intact. Mm -hmm. The downside to Canva, and this is also in the blog post, so you know it's something that'll be refreshed when you guys read over it, is that the free version of Canva does not have transparency allowed on it. That will be grayed out when you go to save your image. You will have to do one of their paid options to save it with transparency intact. Um, but other than that, it's a great program to use. It's one we use because it's great for team sharing. Um, so that's the first one we want yeah, to discuss. Yeah, the, the thing I really like with the team sharing is we have it set up in there. So we have all of our logos mm -hmm. um, and then all of our marketing colors. So like the orange and whatnot, we have the hex keys right there and everything. So if you need to make something quick, you know, you can go in there and you can find all the assets instead of trying to dig around for what color am I supposed to use or yeah. which where are the logos and so yeah that's that's pretty good yeah it makes it a lot easier and that one is a desktop based application that you guys just open up in your browser um, for those wanting to make different kinds of graphics on their phone or on an iPad we highly recommend using over now this is a completely free program it is for iOS only so if you guys are wanting to do editing on Android or another device. There's probably a similar program, but Over is just for iOS. Um, it's kind of your basic builder. You start with a template. You can choose the size you want with your dimensions. You can pick a pre-made size. You can add different shapes and text, colors, everything like that. And it is completely free to render it out as a transparent PNG file and save it directly to your camera roll. Now, the best thing about Over, there are several tutorials online for this as well. If you go to any of the free font sites, if you wanna use your own different kinds of fonts, you can download those using your browser, either Safari or Chrome. It'll actually give you an option while you're downloading it to install it in Over, and then you've got that font to use in Over. So mm -hmm. they have a wide selection of fonts already, but you can bring in any font you want to use. And that's really important if your show or your brand has a specific font you want to use. That way you're not just using generic like Garamond or Arial or anything like that. Right. And again, that one is for uh, iOS devices only. It'll save directly to your camera roll and you can import it from there. Uh, the last one we're gonna discuss is Pixlr. Now, I usually refer to this as Photoshop Lite. If you guys have had any experience with Photoshop, it works essentially the same. There aren't as many advanced tools, but the layout's very similar, the way things operate's very similar. Um, it is free, desktop-based, and again, you get that free download of isn't, the PNG. Um, isn't that browser-based? Is that right? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah so. so Pixlr, they have um, a downloadable version for both App Store and uh, Google Play, but it's only for editing photos. So it's only for filters mm -hmm. and things like that. If you want the actual builder, you've got to open it up on your browser, on a computer. Um, but again, you know, it's great for doing anything you would do with Photoshop, very easy to learn. Uh, you can customize anything, of course, with it being browser-based, 
you can also bring in your fonts there too. So that also gives you the option of using fonts. And again, just save it as a transparency, uh, as a PNG file, and you're good to go. And all of these programs allow you to create your own account as well. So that way you can save the graphics that you've made. And that way, if you just need to make a small change in the future, you're not starting from the beginning. Right, yes. Um... It's now a good time for me to kind of go over, yeah. bring it, I mean, this is going to get a little more technical for uh, Switcher Studio. I mean, you can use these products to make graphics for anything, Yeah. but um, specifically for Switcher Studio, um, when you go to bring an asset in, and we've got tons of tutorials to help you if you haven't done that before, um, but you have an option to use as a full screen graphic, use as a lower third, or use as a corner bug. Now, the difference between those is a full screen graphic, it's just gonna be full screen. Um, no transparency or anything. So I think if you, if you have a transparent and you choose uses, um, and you do choose as a full screen graphic, I think it does white behind yeah, it. Yeah, it just right? puts like a white yeah. picture behind um, it. But for your, uh, for your overlays, you're gonna wanna use corner bug or lower third. And um, what I recommend or what we do and I do typically and this is kind of a little you know hack is set up your canvas when you're creating this as a 1280 by 720 and then have everything be blank except where you want your graphic and when you have that right you can export it and then when you choose lower third it's going to pin that whole graphic to the bottom but since the full graphic or full size of the screen um, it's going to look perfect for you. It's going to be right where you had it in your editor to create that graphic. Um, if you choose use this corner bug, it's going to pin it down to the corner. Of course, you can pinch in and out to resize and put it where you want, but um, just to make that a little bit easier, I always say use the lower third option. Just make sure you have that set up that way. Um, yeah, and that's just kind of a cool, cool way. Like this live Wednesday thing that I just made go away and go back on, like that oh that picture right there that i'm tapping on is a full 1280 by 720 frame picture but it just only the only like colored in area i guess you could call it is the stuff that's in the upper corner right there maybe yeah there it is yeah um so yeah um that's i think all i've got anything else about this area um that's about it. One thing that I started doing as well um, that a lot of people I've noticed have started with a trend is Twitch, of course, is moving towards their more IRL streaming, their in real life, where it's not just a gaming platform anymore. And one thing that I noticed was a lot of streamers that had these really elaborate overlays for their gaming platforms that they had created in Photoshop were then just doing basic video for their Twitch broadcast. With the same thing Dan was talking about, your overlay is most likely going to be made in 1280 by 720 already. Upload that whole overlay as a lower third and that way if you're going live you've got that full screen right there. And this is something you can use for Facebook or YouTube or Periscope as well. If you want some kind of really creative decorative overlay that takes up the screen, you don't have to make it piece by piece. Create the whole thing as your full 1280 by 720, import it in as a lower third, and that way it's just right there ready to go for you. Excellent, excellent. Hey, real quick, I want to bring up before we move on to our user group happenings yeah. and answering some questions there. Um, one other live video strategy is, you know, we talk a lot about the autographer cases and that's what one of our cameras is in here. Um, we just got some stuff in from Archon Mounts that make some really cool stuff. Um, I haven't been able to put it all together, so I'm hoping next week we'll be able to do a three camera shoot on just one tripod using their stuff. And I think it's gonna be a really sturdy, cool setup. Um, but this little guy that my um, iPad, my main controller here is on, is a little Archon mount, and it just folds up into this little tiny thing. It's really cool for doing stuff on the go. So um, yeah, we're gonna be doing a full kind of, I guess, review of the of yeah. it moving forward. But I just wanted to mention that before we went on. If, if you're looking for some new clamps or something to, um, connect your cameras to tripods or whatever. Yeah, definitely check out Archon mounts. Oh, 
Here's Nick Ta-da. with the assist, the little Archon <laughs> bag. Yeah, um, Archon mounts. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so let me see. Oh, I got it. We got a question here. Though. Dave O asked, do you have a PNG of your logo I can get my hands on? Fun fact, um, if you're looking to use it in, um, in Switcher Studio, there actually is a logo that is built into the app that you could use if you wanted to. Um, just go in like you're adding a normal asset. And if you scroll down to the bottom, there's sample ta- images and app icons in there. And if you tap on that, there's the Switcher Studio logo. So, yeah, it's already built into Switcher Studio for you if you need to use it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the user group um, and what's going on there. Sure. So, you know, we mention every week, but we do get a huge increase in people joining the group after each broadcast. We have an online community called Switcher Studio Enthusiasts. It is a Facebook group. Um, I highly recommend joining it. You can either type that in or from the page you're watching this on right now, the Switcher Studio page, click on Groups from the menu and it'll take you directly to that group. We've got, I think, over 1,100 members really? at this Isn't... point. I think we've added another 100 since like two weeks ago. But uh, we've got a ton of active users. They share tips and tricks. They ask questions. They also share their videos. So, you know, definitely make sure to join. If you're logged into your online account at switcherstudio.com, there's also a link to join there. Either way, fill out a short survey. We'll get you into the group and you can start posting immediately. But we always like to bring one interesting topic we've seen asked in the group to each week's Stream Squad broadcast. And this one was asked earlier today by our user Joyce. And it was, you know, basically what to do with pre recorded Facebook, I mean, a pre scheduled Facebook videos. How can you share those out and just ways to get your notifications uh, higher for it. Ironically, right after we saw this question, we noticed the API to set it up had changed. So we're gonna go over that a little bit as well. Um, But some quick tips to get you started. If you pre-schedule an event for your Facebook page uh, in advance, there's gonna be the options of like, comment, and share, just like any post. You can share that to your timeline. You can share it to any other page, any other group. You can, you know, advocate for other coworkers or viewers to share it, and that's going to increase your exposure. Of course, with that post, uh, people can opt in by clicking on get notified, and they'll let them know 20 minutes before you go live, so that way they can get somewhere quiet and prepare to watch your video. And when you go live, any of those shared posts are going to show up with your video. So that's a really awesome way to maximize exposure on Facebook. Now, if you're trying to share a link to that post um, on another platform, like let's say Twitter, uh, you're gonna need the actual link to do it. If you right click on the date and timestamp on any Facebook post, you'll have the option to copy the link to that post. And I think Dan has a little graphic of that. Yes. So you can see on there, uh, we made a quick post it says just now on there since it was just created that time but it could say november 15th or 6 30 p.m anything like that when you right click on the timestamp, you'll have the option to copy link location and then you can post something like don't forget to tune in for my broadcast this friday post the link and that way people can go straight to it and opt in. So those are two really easy ways to get more exposure on Facebook, share it everywhere you can. Off of Facebook, get that link and that way you can make those direct posts. Yeah. Um, That's, yeah. Um, Cool, sorry, I'm trying to read comments here and keep (laughs) up with everything. Dave, thank you for the, posting the the link there to Archon Mounts is that's very helpful yeah um I I haven't been able to look at it too much just because I didn't really notice until we were setting this one up that are scheduling this one that the API has changed but it looks like it's a lot easier to schedule a live broadcast before it was a little bit more difficult to see what was going on but now um if you just go to your publishing tools and click on videos and you choose new live video it's going to 
give you a full screen pop up and you'll have from there you'll have the option um to choose like like just fill out all your all your information whatnot it'll give you the values if you want to go live but there's a big button now right in the lower right hand corner that says uh schedule live video so you'll just click on that and that's going to bring you to the old um kind of interface that we're used to to set it up but um yeah it's a it's a nice clean looking new or a good a good over overhaul for the the facebook api yeah and also when i was looking at it right before the stream you know it is a lot more intuitive just to kind of start out with that but also they actually have a step-by-step -step thing on there now so it'll actually at yeah. the bottom just do step one two three so that way anyone can get started with it you don't need a big long guy to get started with the post but again after you make that you know feel free to share it wherever you want just remember that with facebook scheduling you have 10 minutes to start your live stream from the time you set it to if you go live early it's not going to start early it's going to start right at that timestamp, yes. and it'll start giving you warnings and if you're 10 minutes late it will cancel your entire stream so with facebook make sure you're ready at that time or if there is a delay make sure you log in and change that scheduled time in advance so that your stream does yeah, not what i away. what i really like about it is if you go into those publishing tools you can actually um see when it's supposed to go live and instead of like be staring at the clock on your computer or, or your i ipad or whatever to as soon as it turns two to be like all right welcome we're ready it actually gives you a countdown where it says like two minutes and then it counts down from there so you'll know exactly when it is when your live video is going to go live which i think is pretty helpful yeah absolutely and then, um, uh... the one the one downfall of scheduling though is you can't see comments in inside of the app that's only if you create the event inside the app you'll be able to see you know facebook comments or something there um schedule that i actually kind of prefer when we have the scheduled videos it just um for that for the fact you know exactly when you're going live you can kind of share stuff out beforehand um but yeah being able to see comments in the app is also a, a good value yeah so um is it time to kind of sort of start to wrap this th thing up with a hashtag made with switcher yeah so of course we mentioned the user group already whether you're posting videos in there or you're posting them on twitter instagram anything like that make sure to throw up a hashtag made with switcher we do look through that tag we do watch user videos and putting that tag just makes it easier for us to find your video. Um, each week we like to showcase one user on our show who's doing a great job using Switcher Studio. And today is actually one of our newer users. Her name is Wendy Sky Wind Hogue. Uh, she's an entrepreneur out of Texas and she had already been making live videos. She came across Switcher Studio, I'd say about a month and a half ago, got in contact with us and she's been churning out at least one video a day, if not more. But she's a great example of someone using this to further her business, her experiences. Uh, clip we've got here, she's actually showing some nail care and how she's doing it. So she's got her forearm shot, she's got a side shot, and then she's got an overhead so that her viewers can actually see what she's doing without having to do like right. an awkward hand angle or anything. So definitely check her out her page is uniquely windy sky and she's got a bunch of great content coming up but again thank you for making these videos and for everyone else watching feel free to share your videos with us we love seeing what you guys do and you'll have a chance to be on an episode of stream squad yeah and she's also doing uh kind of what you talked earlier about the twitch where they have like an overlay kind of yeah to kind of stylize the frame of the video that i think works out pretty well too yeah she's making some cool stuff yeah um well i tell you what i think that might be just about all the time we have for today yeah, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, we are live every week for String Squad on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. 
We leave these videos up so you're always able to come back and watch them. Um, if you're watching this after it's gone off air, feel free to leave us a comment. We do go through and still answer those comments after the video. And any questions that we don't get to on air, we will also answer as soon as we are off air. Yeah, again, thank you all so much for, for tuning in. And um, I guess that's it for now. Yeah. See we'll you. see you next week. See you guys.